what does Parcel have coming up? Have you got new projects that you're excited to kind of tackle, new challenges that you're looking to overcome? Yeah, no, for sure. So look, I guess one of the things I wanted to talk about with blockchain, you're able to use a single set of data uh, to be able to uh, leverage multiple applications off of it, right? Mm -hmm. So if let's say we're talking about traceability data, right? The, the history of a product. Uh, that's useful for the cultivator, the manufacturer, the distributor, the retailer. Cool. The regulator also wants to see that same data. So yeah. let's see it. <laughs> we forgot about the most important person in this supply chain. The customer. The end customer. <laughs> and they ultimately bear the strongest repercussions of whether that product was made well, poorly, whatever it is. Yeah. So in the same way that we want to help businesses, we want to empower individuals with as much data, easily accessible information as possible, because there's also a balance. You don't want to overwhelm people with, you know, lab reports that have 500 chemicals and stuff. I mean, I like that stuff. I don't know if it's for everyone, <laughs> um, but, you know, some people are very, very interested in it and we want to make it available and then they can choose how far they want to take it. But we've recently released a new app in the App Store called Parcel Trust. And we believe that it's a solution that the industry needed for some time but just didn't have readily available because what it provides <clears throat> in the first place is the ability for an end user to authenticate the legitimacy of any cannabis or related product that they happen to encounter in or ancillary to the industry. For example, we had a vaping crisis a few years ago, mm. right? Now, none of the vapes from what I was able to see, none of the reports that I saw ever claimed that vapes produced by legitimate companies were causing, causing people to get sick. Absolutely. It, Important to start. Time. Right. Counterfeit stuff, yeah. people taking shortcuts, you know, cheaper, yeah. toxic materials, all that nasty exactly. stuff. Unlicensed, untested. Yeah. Problem is when people were going in to buy it, how could they tell the difference? Mm. They literally had no way to know. And so what we've done is we've used our smart packaging solution, which provides the inventory management and traceability and point of sale functionality and all that stuff that we spoke about before inside the business and marketing. Great. Now an end user can scan that very same smart tag, use the two factor authentication that is on it and know whether that product is legit. And that can be, you know, your vape pen can be your dab rig that could be a set of pre-rolls. You know, a lot of pre-rolls, a lot of the time are filled with inferior product. And then there are people that have decided they want to buck the trend and they want to put, you know, top level flour in their pre-rolls. But how do they make someone understand? Because you, you can't get access to it until you've bought it. So by then it's sort of already too late. Um, now, because one thing we all got to remember, there's a large parallel illicit market that exists for the cannabis industry. And business is good for them. It's better than it's ever been. Um, so at the same time, legal operators are struggling to make ends meet uh, all the time. And it's a real crying shame because the people who are trying to do the right thing are having the most difficult time of it. So part of what it's incumbent on any of us in the industry is to do is to help suppress the black market and support the legal industry as an alternative. Parcel trust is the first way that we do that because at the end of the day, I was going to say at the end of the day, consumer safety must be number one. You know, a lot of people like we're going to bring all these new people to the industry and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. You can't do that if people don't feel safe shopping in your store. It's Absolutely. just not going to happen. And so let me clarify. So you, you've you got the app, the Parcel Trust app. You stroll into a, a dispensary. 
um, or yeah, I'm assuming this would be done in the retail establishment if they're cool with you having your phone out, I guess. But you would you would scan the the product and the, does the product need to have that specific packaging that you mentioned, the smart packaging, or is it any product at all? So I might, uh, I know we, we're recording video, so I've, I've got a little parcel smart tag here. I'm just going to hold it up to the camera so you can see it a little oh. bit. And I'll just put my hand behind it so that okay. we can focus. There's a little printed serial code on the front and an electronic tag that's embedded inside of it. Part of what makes us different, why it's hard to describe to people a lot of the time, it's the way that we put data on this and connect the data in this to the other um, databases and, and elements of our platform. So that's, you know, in American terminology, special source of parcel where it sort of lies. But someone would come and they would see something that looks like this, or, or some, or you know, potentially we have QR-based smart tags which can provide a lot of the same functionality, but don't don't go all the way. So they're easier to hack, um, but they are a lower cost solution. So in our from our mind, I'd rather have more businesses uh, of allowing products to be authenticated rather than enforcing them to buy the um, electronic tags, which provide better functionality and premium businesses will go for, but um, they are more expensive. So it's a higher investment to start off with. Someone comes and they scan it with their phone. This tag, right? The smart tag uses the same technology as your tap and go credit card, right? Yeah. So if you can tap a credit card to pay, you can use parcel to authenticate. Um, the trick is that when you do that, this tag uh, will make the device open up a page. Once you've, you, there's a multi-factor authentication you've got to go through. And if it's legit, you can see actually what the product is. You can see the lab data that was used when it was uh, <clears throat> harvested off of the plant, right? So it tells you exactly what's in the product. I mean. How much more safe do we feel when we go shopping for some food? And it's got that black and white section with the ingredients and, you know, how much sodium and, and carbohydrates and stuff like that. And now we know to look for it. Well, in cannabis, the problem is the story is way too complicated to put it on the side of the package. It's, it's just too complicated. But it's okay. Most people in our society today have access to a smartphone. And so you can use that smartphone uh, interact with something that you bought from within the cannabis industry, whether, like I said, whatever it is, and make sure that it's real. Now, this is the really cool part, though. Let's imagine that I bought, um, you know, some edibles that I thought were Cookies brand off a guy that I saw on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Because <laughs> I thought, I'm, I'm a silly tourist. I don't really know how the industry works. And, you know, I just, someone was selling something, so I bought it. It sounded great. I was looking for cookies brand because I came to California. I'd heard about it. I really just wanted to try it, right? But I ended up buying a counterfeit. So cookies and all the good work and branding that they've done mm -hmm. have lost me as a customer, particularly if I go and consume whatever it is that I bought that's counterfeit and have a bad experience. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, let's put parcel trust into the picture. You use the app. You try to scan it. Let's say they try to counterfeit our tags. I'm sure people are going to do it. Let's say they try to counterfeit our tags and they they, they didn't get it right. Um, and so the app is going, to, is going to pop up with a very clear message that says, this is not legit. Wow. The next stage is where things get interesting because the, the app says, would you like to report it? Mm. And when you report it, you can put photos, you get location data, all of a sudden we can get all sorts of different things. Um, and when we do that, um, we can start to create a map of where this counterfeit activity is taking place, right? Okay. And now this is the part that I really love. You can opt in when you send that message to us that you want to be contacted back to find out, well, what ended up happening about this report of a counterfeit product? And you know what? If I was reporting a counterfeit, I would want to know what happened after that. 
Mm. At Parcel, we, we accept it. We then find the brand that they are counterfeiting and we will connect that customer to that brand. And as long as they've opted in, of course, because, you know, it's all going to be by the choice of the end user. Um, and uh, <laughs> once, once we actually go, once we go ahead and do that and we've uh, allowed them to report it, we will connect them to that brand and allow lost customers to come back into the fold. So I don't know of another application that brings customers that bought counterfeit product back into the legal industry, but that's what we've deployed for the cannabis industry. And we hope it's gonna help everybody um, move the whole thing up and ahead. That's huge. And it would be so cool if, if more products were providing that level of transparency. And I, I guess it's um, it's kind of a catch-22 in some ways for the industry because you've got all of these people who, like you said, are really working hard to, to do everything legally, to provide quality products. And it's an extremely regulated industry. Some would argue the heavily, most heavily regulated industry in America. But um, when you add in these extra steps for transparency, it's great for consumers, it's great for the industry, it's a bit more work uh, possibly for, for the producers and manufacturers. But if you're putting in good work, as you said, show people that you're doing it, right? Show them, show them all the effort and time you've, you've taken to, to provide quality, clean, reliable, consistent products to people because without that, you're gonna scare people away you're giving the entire industry potentially a, a negative, adding to that negative stigma because you can get contaminated products, products that are harmful to people that don't do what they say, that aren't what they're labeled, that have different effects than intended. Um, and so if we're actually going to make this industry something that that can be federally legalized, that people could recommend to their grandmother, to someone in the hospital, to their son, it, it's got to be verifiable it's got to have that level of scrutiny and it, it may be more work it may be more costly but if that's something that that we can provide um you know i i hope i wish that we would do it <laughs> i wish that we would do it and from a consumer perspective i would love that yeah and i mean listen at the end of the day i think listen what did we start talking about today we talked about blockchain and I think it's particularly pertinent here because what's the issue? A lack of trust. Yeah. I have to trust the dispensary. I have to trust the grower and the farm. I have to trust the regulators. They're doing the right thing. I want to trust the, the vape pen manufacturer that they mm -hmm. did the right thing. There's, you know, we've got a complex society that does a lot of really cool things, but you know, let's just proceed with trust, but verify. Absolutely. Well, that's super exciting. Um, have you got any um, depart like closing closing thoughts for our, our listeners, Isaac? Um, look, we just want everyone uh, to have the best experience they possibly have in cannabis, whether it's a medical outcome they're looking for or whatever it is that they're trying to get, you know, help with sleeping or all sorts of different things. Our mission is to help facilitate this and make this happen in a way where those working in the cannabis industry feel that it is the preeminent industry in the world that everyone else looks up to. And so we can kind of flip the script and stop the, uh, the hangover feeling that people have that to be using cannabis is to be lesser. It's mm. not true. And it's time we change that perception. Oh, I love that. Where can people go to learn more about what you're doing and keep up with Parcel and maybe even find out if some of their favorite products are, are using that technology? So I'd always recommend everyone to come see us on our website. Uh, you can also see us on Twitter and LinkedIn where we're throwing things out and Instagram, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, look, we're, we're always happy to engage with as broader uh, as many people as possible, because at the end of the day, ultimately the system is for everyone, whether they're using cannabis, whether they're not using cannabis, it's something that's supposed to help make things better. And we hope that we've been able to, to get a little way towards that. 
That's awesome. Well, thank you for joining us, Isaac. Um, for all of our listeners, if you enjoyed this episode of Cannabis Tech Talks and you want to hear about more emerging cannabis technology, be sure to follow, like, and subscribe to Cannabis Tech Talks on Apple iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, you can also pick up the latest issue of Cannabis and Tech Today on Barnes & Noble newsstands across America and in Canada. And for everyone listening, uh, thanks for joining us and stay elevated. 